What is up, party people? Gary here, GBL Iguanas. Today we are doing our own variation on the ABG mix. All the snakes just need some new substrate. They need thicker substrate just because it's just a little bit thin. So we're gonna do nice thick bioactive substrate that we can put all of our isopod springtails in as well. Apologies for being out of breath, so I had to carry all this junk inside. So we've got some natural hardwood charcoal. We've got some sheet moss for decoration. We've got some sphagnum moss. We've got orchard bark, topsoil. We've got some mulch outside, got some sand outside. And we're gonna show y'all how we're gonna do our take on an ABG mix, so stick around. Alrighty, it is such a nice day outside that I figured why not do this outside? It'll also make it a little bit easier because I'm sure we're gonna get messy. And I don't really wanna get our floor messy and then Auburn's gonna yell at me and then blah, blah, blah. So anyway, we are outside, so we're gonna get started here. So the mixture, the recipe, how you will, of how we're gonna do this. I've kind of seen how actual ABG is made, like what their recipe is. Oh, sorry, let me that real quick. Um, you know, some other, other folks, what they've kind of used as their formulation, um, what Serpa design, what his mixture is. So what I'm doing is kind of gonna be a mixture of all of that, so kind of my take on it. But first and foremost, get the charcoal done because we do have to break it up so the charcoal that we got I uh, just got it from the Home Depot it's just straight up all natural uh, hardwood charcoal um, so there's nothing nothing it's just straight charcoal um, you don't want to get charcoal that has obviously anything mixed into it flavorings mixed in or you know if it's got the fuel part of it um, you just want plain Jane all natural uh, Charcoal. So let's get this poured out into this uh, my little worm box over there. We're gonna crush them up, get it nice and small pieces, and on to the next stop. So I might have overdone it a little bit on pouring the charcoal, but it's okay. Um, we're gonna get this smashed up into some smaller pieces. Now uh, the importance of charcoal in all of this is, I mean, if you're gonna plant out the uh, plant out your tank, the charcoal helps to keep the acidity down in there, but also or it's air uh, you know, clumps to help make sure it's air pockets. Um, but springtails, springtails will use charcoal to breed and lay eggs on, so that's just another good plus. Um, so roughly one part by volume charcoal is pretty much what I've seen. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, smash this up, mist it down to get all the dust off, and throw it into our tub. Let's get going. Tell you what, that's tiring swinging that heavy hammer around so much. I probably put like, too much in there, so the pieces are still a little bit big. Uh, so I'm gonna still crush it up just a little bit more, and then I'm gonna go ahead and mix it in. That's some spooky stuff right there. That's actually kind of cool. I just got the little mister here. Make all the dust disappear. Alrighty, so next step uh, after that, I mean, you can go in pretty much any order. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of the dirt in. Um, you'll see different variations, of course, of this. Some people say peat moss, some say the topsoil, coconut coir, like Nico Earth. Um, I elected topsoil because it is cheap. Uh, peat moss, I know, isn't always the best option because it does degrade a lot faster and it's also not the most environmentally friendly thing that is sourced. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, pour this topsoil in and then get on to the next layer. And I will say one thing I like about this topsoil, I mean, other than I said it's cheap at Home Depot, it's just plain Jane uh, topsoil. It's like two bucks for the bag. This stuff, I mean, I'm sure some of the other ones do too, but this actually will have like some little bits of branches in it. Um, a lot of these recipes that I see, they call for, uh, what is it? Tree fern bark or tree fern fiber or something like that. Um, and apparently that's a little bit difficult to source. So that's why I'm substituting a little bit of cypress mulch, but this soil has, uh, I didn't even realize it or think about it. It has little bits of uh, some sticks and twigs in it. Uh, make sure whatever dirt you get, if you do opt to go like the soil route, make sure it's plain topsoil, that's it. Um, you don't want anything with fertilizers in it, um, no additives whatsoever, just plain Jane dirt. So next step is going to be the orchid bark. Um, I found this stuff at Lowe's. Home Depot had a mix that had fertilizers with it. Um, this is just plain bark. 
Um, the orchid bark, what it's going to do, it helps to aerate the soil because it's little chunks. Um, it's also just something else to put in there that's going to break down over time that, you know, the isopods or whatever other little creatures you put in there, uh, they can eat up. So we got this. So a lot of them will say that's a one part orchid bark, one part dirt. Um, so we're going to just mess around with this and see, uh, see what we come up with on it. If it ends up being a good consistency, if we have to add stuff, we can. I do have extras, which makes life easy. So now we got all that bark in there. And wow, look at that mess. Um, next we'll go ahead and... Oh, I brought two bags of soil out here. I might put that second bag in here. But next we're just gonna add in some cypress mulch, and then we add in a good chunk of sphagnum moss. Um, the sphagnum moss, moss mixing in, again, something else that the isopods can eat, but of course it's something that's very, very good for humidity. Um, so let's go ahead and get this mulch in. We're not going to use the whole bag. We're only going to use a little bit of it because we're substituting the, uh, that tree fern fiber uh, for the mulch. Ugh! putting this mixture in just about all of the snake cages. I'm not going to do it in Bernie's cage because um, his cage already has mulch and soil. The rest of them are just on a thin layer of eco-earth, which has just been not working tremendous. I like eco-earth, but in these cages, the way that that heat holds in, it just dries it out too quick. So doing this, is going to help um, keep that humidity higher and allow me to do all of the springtails and the isopods. So this is a whole lot of dirt when I'll be done. Um, so yeah, so next stop's gonna be the moss. Alrighty, got a good bit of moss added. Again, we're going for that higher humidity, and this is good stuff too. Um, like on Serpa Design, he actually calls for two parts moss for his soil, which this is not two parts, this would be a whole lot less. Uh, but something else I'm gonna mix in since we have plentiful are just some dead leaves. And yeah, if you're taking them from outside, just be careful to make sure you know what you're grabbing them from, basically to make sure there's no fertilizers or anything in it, or pesticides. Um, the dead leaves, just another thing to go in the dirt, give all the isopods some good stuff to crunch on. We're also gonna put a good level uh, layer of this on top of the substrate once we're done, but I just want a good bit mixed all throughout. So we'll just throw all this on top, we'll break it up into some pieces, and then we'll get her mixing. Alrighty, so now that we've got, uh, got it broken up a decent little bit, you know, they're not into tiny, tiny pieces, but it's broken up enough. Now we get the water, and we're just gonna wet this down a little bit and start mixing it together. Don't want anything sloppy wet, you just want it moist, and then when it clumps, you don't want it dripping any water, because then that's just when it gets soppy and nasty. So since this is a lot of dirt, I'm gonna spray a good bit in here, and then get to mixing. Up. I'm pretty happy with the, you know, the consistency and you can just see the mix of it. I mean, you can definitely see the dirt, you can see the mulch, you can see the orchid bark, the leaves, the moss. And then of course, as I start taking out to put in, we'll be good. So now the fun part, I'm gonna bring this inside and then we can start uh, getting some snakes out of their, uh, out of their homes, kind of cleaning everything up, redoing fresh water, all that, all the new substrate, and we'll go from there. Show you what we're doing. I just finished up uh, Simon the articulate python. Uh, what we did so put in a good couple inches uh, of that substrate, tons of leaf litter on top. I have some sheet moss that I kind of spread out all over on top. Um, changed out his hive, rearranged how some of the stuff was in here. But uh, yeah, this should be he should absolutely love this stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep knocking all these out. And then as soon as we're done, I'll go ahead and show y'all what all the finished products are. So we just finished up and now the last part to do is adding in isopods. So we took, I just took all of these right out of Laka's cage. If you saw 
our last video of uh, Blue Tongue Skink Care or the one where we set up isopods, we showed how much was there. So we're just gonna put a few of these into all of the skink cages and they should start to propagate. So first up, we're gonna go into Simon's cage here and we're going to, I guess we'll switch off a little bit here and give him a few. So I'll just give him that much. And that those, like I said, they'll start to uh, they'll start to colonize in this cage. There's plenty of leaf litter in there for them to eat um, and everything else. So that's a nice little start. We're going to do springtails um, in a few weeks once our culture gets a little bit more well established. Now down here is Siggy's. Uh, we're going to go in on the other door because she was a little huffy puffy before. But this is her new cage. If you want to bring the camera and show. It does, it is a little bit cluttered. Um, so we're gonna see kind of how she does with it. And we might have to, you know, we might move some stuff around, but it's more so for us where we say it's a little bit cluttered. For her, she probably is in heaven. Uh, but yeah, so just dump in a few more of these guys into there. And they're just gonna start running around. And then we'll add more into um, as time goes on with them. I just don't wanna use up everything we've got. Um, Currently, I've got all that. And the next cage is Queen Bee, Angela, the Northern White Lip, who is, gosh, she's right here. That girl is, she's in a decent mood today, but she's still very, very striky, huffy puffy, and, but she's a White Lip. So let me get these ice pods in there. All right, and we'll go show up. Uh, show that cage off a little bit. So, so Put the nice thick layer of the substrate in here, put leaf litter, kind of redecorated the cages. <laughs> Look at her. Her tail's hanging up at the top of the heat panel. She is a doofus, man. I tell you what. But yeah, so that should be good for her. We didn't mess with Hufflepuff because this is a more humid substrate mix. She doesn't need any of that. And over here, we've got our girl Becky, the Hypo Pearl Green Berm who was a freaking beehole when I went to get her out of the tub to put her back, she decided that she wanted to turn evil and strike and squirm and musk and I don't know what the heck got into her. She's normally super sweet. So we'll get a few more into here. Yeah, so we got her cage all done up. She's hiding over here in that back corner. Man, I just we're really, really happy with how uh, how this turned out with the with this substrate mix. It just looks nice. And Walter. Yep, and then Walter finally got a bigger hide because the other one was way too small for him. So now we'll just dump in the remaining ice parents. Right, you know. Well, they don't want to let go. Uh, oh yeah, we could put a few of these into Bernie's cage, I guess. playing with bugs but yeah so then this is Walt's cage so his cage is a little bit more simplistic reason being is just because he is a ball python and they do use different elements that you put into their cage um, so that's why he does still have things to do but not nearly uh, as much room for activities he's a lazy potato he really is he's a potato snake and then for Bernie I didn't change out the substrate on his uh, just because I didn't think I made bought enough stuff or uh, made enough for him, but his cage already has, you know, some of the components. So we'll just go ahead and get the rest of these little isopods into here. Whether or not they're gonna do anything in here, hopefully they do, but we're definitely gonna need a lot more than just that. So I'll actually, uh, while you're watching him, you can get some video, I'm gonna go grab some leaf litter real quick. Alrighty then. So appreciate y'all hanging around, sticking around and watching how I decided to make our version of ABG mix, which is called the GBL mix. Ooh. If you want some, I'll sell it to you if you're local. We'll talk. Ooh. But um, yeah, so thanks for sticking around for that. If you enjoy our cages and how I redid them, please comment below if there's something you think I should change in the cages. We always love an outside opinion. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Go to gbliguanas.com. Get a bad shirt like this that's just not covered in sweat, water, and snake urine. Uh, yeah, I'm still running till the end of February. 10% off promo code Diego10. 
Ah, uh, yeah. We will see y'all next time.